Hi, welcome to Mr. Otter Studio. Sometimes people have asked me what the difference is between um, watercolor paper. And one thing I just wanted to show you were some examples of professional watercolor paper that's 100% cotton, and then student grade watercolor paper which is made with wood pulp. And they both are great and they both serve their purposes, but there are some differences. And if you've been a little bit frustrated maybe using student grade paper, Maybe when I tell you some of the things that are good about professional grade paper, it can help you to figure out that that's maybe what you want to use. So let's get started. These are the differences. So one of the main differences is what they're made out of, which also is why the price is different. So this student grade paper, which is great, and I use it all the time. Uh, this is actually Mr. Otter Studios paper. This is a student grade paper. It's made from wood pulp. It definitely can withstand washes and things like that, but it's not going to stand up as much as the professional paper. So professional paper is made out of cotton. It is more expensive and from what I've read online and who knows the truth, it's 10% stronger. What that, what that means, I don't know. But one thing that I do know that makes a difference for me with the professional paper is that um, it stays wet for longer I, and it can handle more water than the student grade paper. So I'm just gonna give you an example. So last week I showed you how to paint clouds using this technique, so I'm just gonna do it on this paper. So here's my, my water's on there. I'm just gonna put it on there. I'm gonna put it on this one as well. I mean, even if you're using professional paper, I would never just like scrub it and scratch it with my paintbrush. But I think there are things you should be aware of. Okay, so I'm just gonna drop some yellow in here. And I'll drop some yellow in here. And I'm going to drop some red over the top. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. And then I'm going to drop blue over the top of that. Okay, so we don't seem, I mean, right now, that's why, I mean, you can tell the student grade paper is doing great. Um, it's kind of pulling into these puddles up at the top. So if, I might just soak up some of that water so this dries a little bit sooner. So I'm just taking a dry brush and just touching it, trying to soak up some of that paint. Okay, so let's just let these washes keep kind of bleeding and blending and we'll work down here. Another difference is going to be this paper is going to get a little bit more wavy. This is kind of bunching up. Look, do you see this huge puddle right here? So the, the paper isn't soaking up quite as much water as the cotton paper. I'm getting, like I even have this pool, this big puddle. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a big puddle of water. There definitely is a puddle of water right here, but it's nothing um, like what I got on this side. So it's definitely soaking it up more. Another thing is just how workable it is. So watch, I'm gonna just do the same thing on this. I'm gonna just paint red with a little bit of yellow, and then I'm just gonna bring some blue in here. And then let's do this on the professional paper and see the difference. Maybe the outcome is going to be that it's not worth it to pay that much more for cotton paper, but in my experience, the washes are incredible. Um, you just have a little bit more time to work on professional paper. I mean, this looks a little different because I had a bigger yellow area, but I mean, the colors are blending and bleeding. One thing though that I wanna point out is that this is still wet and you can see that the student grade paper is dry. So that makes this more workable. So it means that I have more time to add to my washes and that's a good thing with watercolor because you, when you want it to blend and you want to create this really cool mix, you need some time to have that happen. And also when it starts to dry so fast and there's these other puddles, you're going to get these lines, these really harsh lines. So this is going to be, I guess, the biggest difference. One of the biggest differences is that it's going to dry a lot faster on the student paper and you're going to get puddles. I'll just kind of move this around so you can see it. And then on the professional paper, you can see that it's still 
pretty workable around the edges, but where it's dry, we're not getting a harsh line. Well, it kind of is a little bit, but nothing compared to that. So that's just a little demonstration. Uh, I could even try, I can try to really work this paper over. So I'm just gonna, you see that? Don't ever do this. Okay, so I'm just kind of pushing it around. Now watch this on this paper. If I do that on this paper, even twice, did you see what happened? Okay, I think I need to do that again because I think this is one of the, one of the biggest differences besides that you have a lot more time with the cotton paper to do your mixes and blends because it soaks up more of the water and stays wet. But watch this. Okay, so I'm just gonna put red down and I'm gonna go over it. Let's count. So I put it twice. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. You know, I think I have some paper from there actually in my brush. So let me try it again. Okay, so I'm just gonna pick up some blue and there is some color under this. Hmm, nah, that's okay, I'll do it maybe at the top. So watch. I think I've got more pulp in this. Okay, so I'm gonna put some blue down and then I'm gonna just rub, I'm gonna paint back and forth 20 times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, now watch this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So what you can see is happening over here is that my paper is starting to disintegrate and I would never recommend scrubbing it, but I just wanted you to see like how much more resilient the professional paper is and see there's wood pulp in my brush than the student grade. I mean, it's good to see the differences, right? And you can also see how it's drying is different. We do get a little bit of a line here because I left these puddles around the outside, but still nothing, nothing like the student grade paper. The washes still look pretty good on both, but the professional paper sometimes will blend just a little bit better. So I don't know, those are just some of the main differences I just wanted to show you. If you've ever wanted to try professional paper, um, it is more expensive, so I would recommend using it for your final projects, not for your practices. And some student grade paper, I mean, looks professional depending on how you use it. So anyway, that's it. Have a wonderful day. Uh, today I didn't give you an assignment, but what maybe what you could do is research what kind of paper you're using and what's in it. And yeah, let us know in the comments below. I'd like to know what kind of paper you all prefer to use and what differences you've seen between professional paper and student grade paper, and if it's worth the price. Also, um, I'd be interested to know, like what, what do you think the most expensive watercolor paper is? I would love to see if you can answer that question. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for joining me today on Mr. Otter Studio. I hope you learned something and this can help you uh, choose what kind of watercolor paper you wanna use, and have a wonderful day.